Y'all all right today? Good to see y'all. Everybody ready? Y'all ready? Whoop. Well, thank y'all again for coming out today. Uh, I'll start off and try not to take too much of your time. Just want to let everyone know that we are making progress in Livingston Parish. We started off with over 57,000 people without power. We're down to 46,974 as, as of an hour and so ago. Uh, those numbers are steadily getting better for us. Uh, Denham, Walker, Watson area primarily, uh, where there was less destruction than obviously on the, on the east and southern side of the parish. So things are beginning to get better. And while I'm mentioning that, I do want to say again another little word about generators. We're getting a lot of calls on our hotline number about generators going bad. Keep in mind that these little generators that are bought at Home Depot, Steins, and all these other little places are great little generators, but they're not designed to work 24 hours a day with a heavy load. They need to be turned off, cooled down for a while. Please check the oil and those kind of things. And of course, as you know, always keep the exhaust facing out away from your home. Uh, as much as possible, but we're getting a lot of calls on that, so I wanted to, to, to mention that. We still have the shelter at Live Oak, uh, Ohio, Old Louisiana Highway 16. We did have earlier this morning, I think around 68 in the shelter. We do have two pods open now in Denham Springs and Albany. These are operated and run and uh, maintained by the National Guard. We sure appreciate them. By the way, the National Guard is more than doubling their force in Livingston Parish today. Uh, that's good news. Uh, but the pods are at the Old Albertsons at the corner of South Range in Florida and at the Bethlehem Baptist Church at 29350 South Montpelier Road. Uh, we're hoping to get three more pods in throughout the different parts of the parish, and we will announce those locations and times as soon as we know that they're ready to go. Uh, the parish is continually delivering commodities throughout the areas of the parish, and most people are fairly familiar where those are. Uh, do we have a list? I'm not sure if we have a list. Okay, we will get that to the press as soon as we can get that list confirmed. Uh, I am being asked about this, and so I do want to mention the debris contract, as I said the other day, was initiated. They did ch change gears a little bit on me and double up their staff their crews, so now they are going to be picking up as they're going through cutting, and that's good news for our parish. Please don't put in the ditches. Please don't put in our ditches. If we have any more rain, the last thing we need is debris piled up in our ditches more than what's already there now that we're going to be going around and hopefully getting out. Uh, so please, please don't do that. We need those clear. Be sure and separate vegetative construction and demolition, and white good uh, materials. They have to be in separate piles. So you should have three separate piles if you've had home uh, debris or destruction. Some of you may have that, but you may have these and white goods and things. Separate that out. That, that has to be done. Uh, also want to mention that the DSNAP program has been requested. As soon as we get a timeline on when that is up and ready to go, we will announce that. Uh, we're waiting on the state uh, to give us the go-ahead on that. Uh, but you can pre-register from now through September the 28th at dcfs.la.gov.preregister. dcfs.la.gov.preregister. We're getting a lot of calls on that. Uh, in contact with FEMA for individual assistance and, and be able to discuss the different IA residence assistance, you can register at disasterassistance.gov, disasterassistance.gov, and while still a lot of people are without power and computer, there, believe it or not, have been over 4,000 who have already gone on and pre-registered for that. We have requested an extension, uh, and we feel pretty sure that we'll get that, but we have requested an extension on the critical needs assistance. This is for things like if your food ruined in your refrigerator, uh, those kind of things, you can can qualify up to $500 on that. That number is 1-800-621-3362. 1-800-621-3362. Now, the curfew. 
We did, in conjunction with the sheriff and Homeland Security, we did reissue our curfew with different timelines through the weekend, through Sunday night into mon Monday morning, and that is from 12 a.m. until 6 a.m. As power is coming on, more and more places to eat, more and more places to get gas, so we need, to, we need to be open to allow our people to be able to get to them. That requires some time, and the sheriff will elaborate on, on uh, how you handle the curfew, but that, that is important to note. We're getting a lot of calls. We always do on curfew, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Sheriff Ford. <coughs> Good afternoon. I want to start out by, um, I know that there's a lot of uh, my fellow sheriffs throughout the state that not only have, have been impacted, but they're actually sending help down. They're helping me, and I just want to tell them uh, thank you to them and the other state and, uh, representatives that has actually helped us get our resources. Uh, so I want to discuss the curfew for a little bit. Uh, we did change it from midnight to 6 a.m. Uh, like I said the last time, we're going to have uh, our deputies use their discretion. If you're going to work, no problems. If you want to make sure your mother is okay, no problem. You have a business to run. Maybe you're trying to get gas. We understand that. We're very considerate of that. However, the criminal element, if you think you're going to loot, if you think you're going to run around, you're going to steal things, you will go to jail. And you will sit in jail until we have time to deal with you. Do not come to Livingston Parish stealing or doing any kind of crime or any kind of activity. I have deputies from all over the state here helping my deputies, and we are absolutely taking zero tolerance. I do not want to be responsible for your criminal element life when you go to a resident in Livingston Parish at nighttime that I can't get to you, you're going to have to deal with them. And it might be, you might want to deal with a sheriff's deputy, so I'm telling you, you need to stay out of here if you're up to no good. I'm going to protect my citizens and we're going to protect this parish. So listen to what I'm telling you, zero tolerance. We have already issued 34 summonses for uh, out after curfew. Those curfew violations did not get pulled over and issued a curfew because they were getting gas. They had some other criminal activity going on with it. Up to no good. Two looting arrests that were made. One stole some fuel from a business out of St. Helena. We stopped them here in Livingston and they were put in jail. Uh, worked with the St. Louis uh, Parish Sheriff's Office. The other one was stealing gas from a residence. He was arrested as, uh, as well. We just set up our, our contractor fraud hotline, and I would like for y'all to put that out. Um, so the hotline number is going to be 225-435-1345. If you have any issues with contractors, you make sure you call that hotline. I have some detectives and people standing by that are very um, versed in that. They, they understand. They know what it, that that's their job. And again, the contractors, come over here to help people. We'll give you anything we need to give you to help get that job done. If you come over here scamming my citizens, you're going to jail. I don't care where you run off to. We're going to come there. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you back to Livingston. Do not come over here messing with them. We've been through this before. We're not going through it again. If you are a citizen of this parish and someone knocks on your door, if they don't, uh, they have, uh, they're going to have a license on them, a driver's license, they're going to have a contractor's license, they're going to have a vehicle, and they're going to have a license plate. You need a picture of all of it. That helps us to do our job. We want you to get your help. We want you to pay attention to what's going on, but do not be a victim. All these contractors that are coming here, you, they, they'll be more than glad to give you what you need to make sure that they're legit. The ones that are up to no good are going to walk away from you if they know that they can't scam you. So pay attention. We have all the information. If you have any questions, you call that hotline. If uh, any, anything, uh, any complaints, if you would, dealing with uh, price gouging, please call the AG's office. They have a hotline thing set up over there. Uh, we are monitoring currently. I know that we've had a lot of questions and people calling in. We're currently monitoring as we speak. I have deputies boots on the ground looking at all these gas station locations as well as pod locations to come up with some type of uh, plan as quick as possible so we can help out because we want, again, we want to do everything we can to try to, to try to make this thing flow smoothly. So please be patient with us. 
we're working. We have a lot of things coming down the pipe. We're ready. We're getting it done. And each day we have to change what we're doing to something that's going to be happening tomorrow. Uh, and we're ready for it. We're ha we have plenty of manpower. We just got to make sure that you're patient and work with us. But we are monitoring those type situations. I said earlier we do have uh, right now 25 deputies across the parish from other areas of the state. We have, I'm sorry, let me back up. We have 25 deputies in our parish that are from other parishes across our state that are right now helping stay in here uh, overnight and doing what our deputies do, working side by side. And again, I want to thank them for what they've done for Livingston Parish. Uh, we have a lot of uh, donations that are coming in to the Sheriff's Office. I just want to tell you thank you. Um, I couldn't ask for a better team of deputies that are working hard, that really care about this parish. And I appreciate all of you that recognize that and are trying to help out as well. If you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, one, one other thing, I know uh, there are some uh, citizens that may have a, a loved one that is actually housed at our Louisiana work, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, work release, the Livingston Parish work release that's located on Woodside Drive in Walker. So we have uh, roughly 60, 70 inmates located there. They have been moved to the Livingston Parish Detention Center. So we took them from the Walker location, which is a work release that is ran by Lock 5 Company. We moved those inmates to the Livingston Parish Jail for the reason that we have some electrical line workers that needed to get in here, about 150 of them, to try to get us power quicker. So we were able to house them there, making this little plan. And we, uh, so that move was made just a little while ago. So if you can't get them on the phone, that's what's going on. They haven't, they've been intake right now. They didn't do anything wrong. They're still going to be able to go to work, but we have to change plans because it's very important that we get power. So any resources I have at the sheriff's office, we're going to give it up to get this, to get y'all electricity and the things you need to, to, to get going. So I just wanted to, to let y'all know that. And again, if you have any questions, you can call us. Uh, Demko. Yes, sir. You're up. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Sheriff R, just to mention, we are super thankful for him sharing his facilities with our workers. It's a great need. We all know power restoration is a great need, and it's great that he has a system in place to safely move these uh, uh, inmates and these trustees to get them in a safe spot and to get us a place where we can feed and house our men. Uh, we told them we wouldn't keep them there longer than they should be unless Sheriff Ard feels like he needs to keep them uh, detained. So, uh, but they're uh, just kidding. There are a lot of great guys. Uh, just a report on Livingston Parish uh, at Demco. System wide, Demco has restored power to 53%. That's over half of our membership. Uh, damage to our system was hundreds of poles and lines down. We know that stripped poles, uh, but also to mention the flooding continues to limit access to certain areas. Those folks will be restored when it is safe to get in and get out. We know that the community can be unsafe if we try to make a restoration when there are high waters. Uh, let's see, 29,000 meters are out, just to give a, a number to Livingston Parish, 29,000 meters are still out, and 16,300 have been restored. Uh, distribution feeders will be made hot when the substations are made hot. So when we get that power to a lot of our larger substations, that's when we begin to energize those stations, and we can troubleshoot from that point on. So it goes from larger to smaller in that restoration process. Uh, crews are working in the LIGO area today, and they're hoping to power up this evening or tomorrow. Uh, we're working the LIGO south circuit and the circuits to restore businesses in that area as well. Uh, the Denbury, many of your viewers are familiar with Denbury substation is being worked as well and uh, this uh, substation will go towards the LIGO area or it gets its power from that LIGO area. This is estimated on the 5th to the 7th sometime in there. Uh, our Holden station is going to take weeks. It is devastation in that area of the uh, One other, certainly, that we want to mention, the Killian area is having progress, uh, but it is being hindered also by that high water in the area from the uh, river. 
So at this time, uh, I'm finished, but we'll do some questions after. Thanks. Our friend, Miss Energy. <laughs> Thanks, um, President Ricks and Chef Ard, uh, for this opportunity. Um, when we were before you the other day, we told you that we were 60% assessed. And so now that we're 100% assessed, um, I can give you some numbers um, from that assessment. Um, there were approximately 300 polls down, approximately 900 spans of wire that were down, and the 900 spans of wire, 500 spans of wire had vegetation issues. And we had a, over 100 transformers that um, need to e either be replaced or repaired. This morning, uh, we released to the media and our social, social media uh, platforms of uh, the restoration of uh, estimated times of restoration for Livingston Parish for our area we are we are striving to get the vast majority of our customers res restored by September 7th um, keep in mind this is just an estimated time of restoration uh, we all know things can happen data and what we know um, we're comfortable that we can get the vast majority of our customers on by um, September 7th. Um, for those that can take power, for those that can receive electricity, we're going to try to get you on. Um, we continue to ask you guys to be patient with us um, as we continue to rebuild our system um, as efficiently and safely as possible. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. All right, my Homeland Security Director, Ms. Brandy. Uh, Mr. Layton covered most of what I would d discuss, but I just want to reiterate some of what he already went over. Um, I want to talk about what's available to the citizens um, of this parish. So as he stated, there's two pods opened currently. I have requests in for three more in the southern part of the parish. We're just waiting on approval for those. Um, right now we have the one in the old Albertsons parking lot at the corner of South Range and Florida Boulevard in Denham Springs and the other one is at Bethlehem Baptist Church in Albany, um, and that's at 29350 South Montpelier Road. Um, I also want to talk about that DSNAP. Um, the state has to issue um, kind of like a declaration for DSNAP um, that's in the process, but it hasn't come through yet. Like Mr. Layton said, um, you can go ahead and pre-register from now through the 28th of September, and that is at dcfs.la.gov slash pre-register and you can like I said you could do that anytime and I know a lot of people don't have access to power to internet their phones don't work um, we will continue to request extensions as we need to for all of this um, and we will be setting up some stations here in the parish for people to charge their electronics um, I also want to tell you about FEMA individual assistance uh, like he said you can go to disasterassistance.gov to register um, and that is for things such as you know your house is messed up you need rental assistance uh, maybe your contents got messed up and you don't have insurance those sort of things but we also have that critical needs assistance which is a part of IA um, and that is up to five hundred dollars and um, that is for you know any incidentals that you're going through right now food water you know whatever it is you need to spend that on um, that deadline has been set for tomorrow I have ex requested an extension because, uh, like I said, most of our people don't have access to, to be able to register for, this, for those sort of things. So I've requested the um, extension, and hopefully they'll get back to me soon on that. At least extend it you know, another week or two. That would be great. Um, and for that, you can register at 1-800-621-3362. Um, and that's all I have. But thank you. Thank you, Brandy. <coughs> I do want to mention, too, while we have Demco and Energy here, it's, it's amazing the work that these linemen have done under de devastating conditions. And while at the same time understanding what their families are going through in their homes, just like first responders, sheriff's office, everyone that's out here working, everybody, again, I know they're hot, tired, and all these other things, but please thank any of these guys and any of these linemen when you run into them or see them. If you have the opportunity to hand them a bottle of water or something like that, do it. I want to mention something, and this is sort of a real touchy kind of thing to mention. We need as much help in Livingston Parish as we can possibly get with water, uh, ice, anything like that, meals, chips, cookies, whatever we can pass out, crackers, it doesn't matter. 
and we appreciate everything that everybody's doing. But we do have an issue when trailers, uh, truckloads, people pull into these different areas out of the goodness of their heart to set these places up to start passing out. It does and can create a, a real nightmare for the sheriff's office, for them. No one knows they're there. No one knows why they're there, who they are, uh, on those kind of things. And then when they need help, the sheriff's office doesn't know they're there because we haven't contacted them and made them aware of it. So what we're saying is please, please continue to bring and help any way you can. But first and before you do that, please call our hotline at 686 3996 and make us aware of where you want and would like to do this so that first of all we can make sure it's safe and secondly that we can make sure that the sheriff's office and anyone else that might would need to know you're there knows you're there first and foremost because of safety nightmare can be created from traffic standpoint people showing up you've already moved we never even knew you were there all kinds of things can happen so Please continue to help. We appreciate it, but let us know that. And if you don't get us for some reason, please call the sheriff's office and make them aware of where you're at because this could affect a lot of things. Don't want to dissuade you from not coming and helping. We need all the help we can get, and we appreciate every bit of it. But that is uh, very important to please make someone in our office or the sheriff's office aware of where you're at and what you're doing. We'll take any questions that you have. Yes, ma'am. Um, Rosie reports that uh, Livingston Parish waived electricity permit. Um, have you guys checked with, I guess, the fire department or any anyone like that to see if that's like a good idea? We don't have to check with them to see if it's a good idea. What we do in disasters like this is we we touch base with our power because they're going to know that these places are safe before they connect them. They're never going to come in and connect them that they don't make sure and they're the experts on that. Uh, we do waive our fees, and we do not. And we we're very careful in how we handle the permitting issue because it has caused me some issues in the past, as we all know. But I'm going to get my people back power and back in their homes as fast and as quick as I can, following as many of these guidelines by FEMA as I have to and, 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 and need to. Uh, but we feel very confident that Entergy and Demco know what they're doing. We like it if we're aware of it, but a lot of these people, there's no way to let us know. And uh, we do hope, them to, hope to open our offices back up Tuesday, but we also know there are going to be a lot of employees that are not going to be able to get a lot of people out in the parish that aren't going to be able to get in here to get their permits. But we will always help them get this, and, and then we will go back and try to make sure all of our permits and things are, are worked out and straight at the end of the day. But no, ma'am, I don't have to call anyone to get permission to put these people back in their homes. So I've got a question from folks not knowing what the pods are. Can you explain what those are again? Yeah, basically these are, uh, I guess, described as 18-wheelers full of water uh, and things that she requests, like water, ice, MREs, tarps, those kind of things. And they're, they're run and maintained and operated by the National Guard once we get them here. And uh, we do have the two set up and are hoping to have three in the hardest hit parts of the parish. I know we're asked sometimes, why do we get it over here and not over here? Uh, and, and most people understand that, but there's a lot more devastation over here. So it's taking longer to be able to get in these areas. And unfortunately, truth be known, they do need it more. But we're, we're working hard to get that done. And three, have, three more, three additional have been requested. Jason. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I have a couple questions for Jason. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the two who were arrested or issued summons for stealing gas. Has there been any other issue? Like, uh, is it just stealing? Uh, yeah, the, the, the two looting uh, issues that we had were actually stealing uh, fuel. Mm -hmm. And the other ones were uh, issued uh, out by uh, past curfew. And those actually had other charges along with them. So basically, uh, stopped them at 2 o'clock in the morning. What are you doing out past curfew? and they had drugs on them, those type of things, that felony warrants. So that usually what happens whenever you see the curfew violations, normally there's something else with that. And just so people can know, because a lot of people are upset just about, you know, saying, you know, there's upset about the curfew. Like, mm -hmm. have y'all 
giving people passes, like if they, as your deputy, like if someone was pulled over, so were you going out to Kirk if you want to work? Have y'all been given those passes? Yeah, like, yeah, I always, I, we always use our discretion. Uh, we understand and want these businesses to open up. The more gas stations we get open up, the better off we are. The more restaurants that open up, start feeding people, and get to some, you know, back to some kind of normalcy, the better off we are. So these deputies are going to use their discretion, and they're going to make sure that if it's someone that is doing what they need to be doing, uh, trying to take care of their family, take care of their business, they won't have any issues. They don't have to worry about that, and they've been around long enough to know that. But come midnight tonight, if you're not closing up your business, instead you're trying to break in your business, somebody's business, you've got issues, and we're going to put you in jail. So we're, we're paying very close attention to that. Um, I actually assessed the parish myself last night. And I rode around, and uh, we knew that there was people out to around 10 o'clock. You can tell it was busy people. You had, you know, companies working. We're not going to mess with them. Around 11, 12 o'clock, it started slowing down. People were getting home. That's why we moved it back. We feel like 12 o'clock. We let all uh, these restaurants open back up if they can. Uh, most of them close around 10 or 11 anyway. Uh, if a gas station can stay open past 12, we'll work with them. We want people to get what they need. And uh, so we have a lot of stuff going on. So I just want to make sure they understand what the curfew is all about and, and just be patient and help us to, to get this done. Look, there's a lot of people that don't have any power in certain areas of this pair, a lot of them still. And they need these extra patrols. And it helps these deputies to know uh, what's going on, stop these people, what are you doing, that type of thing. So we've already started to have some success with that, and we'll continue to have success because th these numbers, I'm telling you, um, uh, are going to grow. And my jail population is going to grow along with it. Uh, so it's going to happen. And it, we've just seen it too many times. For Daniel, yeah. um, yes. quick question, Mr. Lang. Have you guys heard reports of homeowners denying access to crews? And if, is that slowing them down or not? We have not heard report of that at all. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I was wondering if you could sort of talk through your experience getting stuck in your home in Springfield and needing to be cut out before you could get out. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry? I was wondering if you could sort of speak about your experience of, of needing to get you know, cut out of the area you were in early <laughs> on in the storm and just to walk through kind of. Um, when I was trapped? Yes, sir. Uh, There's this nothing I haven't dealt with before. Um, I've been here 29 years and worked a lot of storms and cut a lot of trees in my time. Um, I knew uh, because to the storm we did something a little different we just uh, placed our uh, these deputies across the parish most most of them were in our homes a few of them here because we knew we were going to lose communication things of that nature get out to assess uh, I knew that I was trapped high water and trees on one side trees down on the other and uh, so my mission was to get to this office along with other deputies as quick as we could we knew some would get here at 9 in the morning some would get here at 4 o'clock that afternoon so it was a, a not, not only it was a not only a team effort with the sheriff's office, but you had your firefighters, first responders, uh, your community. It was a lot of people that were helping. Uh, we had a lot of trees just to cut our way out, and that's what we did. Uh, I had a neighbor that I I've, I've met before, had a tractor, I had a couple of chainsaws, and we we worked our way out, just like a lot of other people had to do. And I just wanted to, to follow up on that. Do you know of any areas or like any residents in sort of more secluded areas who might still need to be cut out of areas like that, or most of those folks? I don't know. I know they still have some areas. We there's still uh, the high water is now finally going down. It has uh, presented a little bit of a challenge to get to them. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, 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 they're working, but it, it's down to a minimum. Center, or is it still running on generators or is power been restored? There? I believe we just got power back a little while ago. I'm going to ask Brandy to follow up just a little bit on the pods because we, we get a lot of questions about that and, and maybe it will help you get information out for us. Brandy. Okay. Um, so just to help everybody understand what a pod is, uh, like Mr. Layton said, um, what we do is we, requ we re request pods, and that usually comes with ice, water, MREs, and tarps. Um, just because we request it doesn't mean that's what we get. It just depends on what commodities are available at that time. And a pod will run um, until we start getting a lot lower numbers coming in. So every day it will be operational until the numbers dwindle down. Um, so you have several, you have three different types of pods. Um, a type three is the, the basic one, which is 
for the most part in our area what we have to do because of limited space. Because a type three pod could have to have anywhere from six to eight, uh, 18 wheelers that we have to park. So you know we're limited on space on where we can get that done. Um, I will tell you that in the beginning on Monday, I requested two pods because we had two areas that we knew would work and um, we couldn't get to the south at that point to even figure out where to put pods. Um, and that was, of course, um, Bass Pro in Dunham Springs and then um, the church in Albany. And I was contacted and told we could only get one for right now. We would get another one very shortly, but we could only get one. The reason Dunham Springs was chosen was because the area was much larger and I could get a type two, which is almost double the amount of commodities. That's why we did it, um, so that we could get more people covered and um, have more stuff available to everyone. So, um, and like I said, those are completely um, operated until our numbers dwindle down. They are operated by the National Guard. These requests go through the state. Um, we also have to house everybody who works these, and usually that's 25 to 35 um, National Guardsmen that, that we have to try to house as well. So um, we will continue to get these things operational around the parish now that we can get to parts in the south. Okay. Um, are they, uh, you have a are they running the same hours, the ones in Denham and Albany? Like yes, they, they will be. So, and we ended up having to move the one from Bass Pro just because of um, logistics purposes for all the traffic that was over there because that's where the gas was available and then Sam's opened up. Um, so it was too much traffic and we moved it to, to Albertson's, the old Albertson's parking lot. But um, the, they initially open up at noon their first day. Um, because it, they come in the night before and then they get set up. So we opened at noon, the one in Bethlehem. Uh, Beth but tomorrow they will both start from 8 a.m. and run till 6 p.m. every day. Every okay. day, including after Saturday, like as long as As long as the numbers are good. Um, they, like I said, they, they keep a count every single day at the end of the day how much is going out, and that tells them if, if we still might have a need the next day. And so they order more commodities and have them shipped in. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Again, thank you all so much for coming. We really depend on y'all to get as much of this information. I know you have to do snap bits. I understand how it works, but as much of this as you all can get put out to the public, uh, because a lot of them don't get to hear from us and see us every day like typical disasters where they sometimes may get to. So we appreciate it. Appreciate you taking the time to get this out. Thank you all very much. Sure.